Hi right, everybody, we're down here at 19th and Dolores in San Francisco. Uh, we're getting ready to go on the slut walk. Uh, this is Freeman Sullivan, your uh, live streamer here. Uh, glad you could join us. Uh, basically, uh, slut walk is a, it's, we're going to be marching against uh, rape and the fact that uh, women should be free to wear whatever they want, whatever they want, and uh, not have to walk around fearing sexual assault. Uh, so it's definitely a uh, important event and uh, as soon as I get my gear I'll sew it a little bit better I'm gonna go around and see if we can interview a few people here give you a little bit of background on what's going on and uh, just thank you uh, thank you for watching uh, please tell your friends and neighbors about our live stream and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be in New York Hello, next week friends. anyway here we go we're gonna be starting our pre-rally in about 10 minutes So I spot somebody here that I know that will be able to say a few words. Oh. A nice crowd here today. I guess there's about 100 people here. Uh, we're here in San Francisco at Dolores Park, 19th and 19th Street, if you're in the area. Uh, please come by and support the various activities that are going on here. Oh. Hey, do me a favor. Could you grab my chair and like stick it over in like, the middle there so when we get ready to speak, I'll have a place to sit down. Let's go check out some of the literature here. Of information here. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Any overall respectful. Yeah, she just came up. She's like, she's like, what are you doing? Hi, everyone. Quick announcement. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Oh, I'm surprised. No, put it over here. Everybody, let's go. Hey Tommy, hey, not too bad, not too bad, glad to see you, I came up here because I saw your, your posting, uh, you have anything you want to say to the people watching the live stream out there? Come on out, come on out and support this. But, uh, what, are, what are we uh, out here for? Basically. We're out here to say to the world that somebody shouldn't be raped or murdered because of what they wear, who they are, how they dress, how they present themselves. Um, to, to the world, they, they, there's, people have no right to attack people, to murder people on that basis, and we know it happens. We know the homosexual the panic defense, the transgender panic defense, you know, uh, judges saying that women deserve to be raped because they're dressed like sluts. I mean, all that stuff is crap and needs to go, and we're here to say it, it's going. It's Enough's out enough. Of here. Yeah. Good, good. Thanks a lot. Sure. Thanks a lot. Podcasting, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm out here. I'm actually getting ready to go to... Uh, New York City for the Upper Occupy Wall Street, oh, cool. and uh, we actually have a television studio to work out of, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah, and I'll be, here for yeah, we're going to do a lot of actions here yeah. in San Francisco. So, but it's going to be an exciting event. I'm ready to go. I'm finally, I'm finally got my mobility back after, after being shattering my leg a couple of years ago. So, so. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's my chair. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Pretty good. How are oh, you? I got some new, got some new glasses there. Finally. Yeah. Hey, could you grab my chair and like stick it right and like so I can uh, get up? Are we gonna be marching too? Or? Uh, yeah, but I can get up. We're not ready to leave just yet. Got a real nice crowd here. So glad you could join us. Make sure you follow me. Uh, there's a little button on the Ustream channel that I that I'm uh, streaming from. Yeah, this is fine right here. Thank you. Ustream channel that I'm operating out of. And just hit the follow button and you can receive an email updates uh, about when I'm going live and when my live stream is about ready to start. And uh, you keep up with it that way. If you'd like me to cover your event, uh, you can contact me, uh, Freeman Sullivan at gmail.com or tweet me at Freeman Sullivan. 
or you can give me a call after the live stream is over. Area code 415-499-2780, 415-499-2780, and I'll be happy to come out and cover your event free of charge. So we've got a lot of excited people out here. It's a beautiful day here in San Francisco, as usual. Yeah, I'm getting out and about a lot more now, so you're going to be saw seeing a lot more events here in uh, not only in San Francisco, but Washington, D.C. and New York City. I'll be in New York for Occupy Wall Street first anniversary. And we, we're... Uh, also, uh, going to be doing a live show at 10 to 10.30 p.m. on uh, Occupy News Network, uh, which is, and also we're going to be uh, on the public access in Manhattan on the days of, uh, on September 17th at 10 to 10.30 p.m. So we're really excited about that. And we'll uh, reveal more details about the show. So far, we've confirmed uh, Aaron Kay, uh, noted Yippie Pie Man. He's going to be one of the guests on the show, uh, which will be a roundup of the day's events where we, we will be showing you clips and and live streams in addition to the chat and hopefully we'll have it set up so you'll be able to call in or chat with us directly as we're doing the show because we do like audience participation so if you'd like to participate in the chat on my Ustream page uh, you need to be logged on to either Twitter Facebook or logged on to Ustream and click the tab that says social stream on it and I would appreciate it if you let me know how my audio and visual is coming out uh, and if it's a uh, choppy or the audio is choppy or whatever uh, please do let me know or if you have any questions or anything you'd like to know about the event uh, please tweet me and I'd be more than happy to uh, answer your questions Slutwalk started in uh, Toronto last year as a response to uh, a series of races that were going on in Toronto. Uh, it was sort of like an uh, epidemic. And uh, a lot of people use the defense when they go into court as the way the, uh, the victim was dressed as being a pretext that was uh, using that as a way to defend themselves in court, which is a totally bogus defense and, and uh, shouldn't be used in court. So that's a little background on what's going on here here today. I'm not totally versed up in what's going on, I, although I should be, but that's basically the crux of what's going on, in case you're wondering. And if you're in the Mission District or in the Castro, uh, come down to here to 19th and Dolores and join us. We'll be here at 19th Street, I guess, for approximately another half an hour, and then we'll be leaving for a march up the 18th Street to the Castro, and that will be... Uh, that should last until 2 p.m. I'm glad to see there's a lot of women present. I always need more women at demonstrations. 
and participating. We should have some speakers coming on here in just a couple of minutes, so be patient. because they're tired of the word being used against them. <laughs> Welcome to the Slut Walk SF Bay pre-rally for our march. I'm so excited to see everybody here in all of your fierceness and in all of your normal wear. It's really great to see everybody. My name is Jade Lynn Stahl. I'm an organizer from Slut Walk SF Bay. So, and just to catch everybody up, in case everybody knows, Slut Walk started last year in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, when during a safety forum at Osgoode Law University, a constable by the name of Michael Sanguinetti said to those that were in attendance, women that do not want to be victimized, women that want to be safe, women that do not want to get raped or sexually assaulted should avoid dressing up like sluts. That's pretty much how everyone there reacted as well. And what they did is the women organized and took action. There were thousands of women that organized a protest in the streets of Toronto. They went to the police headquarters and they demanded that this all too common, outspoken man who spoke something that is a global epidemic, that he be held accountable that we talk about victim blaming, that we discuss slut shaming, and that we discuss objectification, not from the perspective that the survivor could ever be held accountable, from the perspective that only the perpetrator can ever hold any fault in the sense of rape or sexual assault. <laughs> this, of course, has been a bit of a controversial movement. Not only because we feel free enough and are creating safe spaces where we can feel free enough to dress in the manner that we choose, whether that be to show skin or to remain completely covered, but also because the word slut itself is something that is, by its nature, controversial. There are some communities that feel as though the word slut has been used against them so terribly and horribly that they, it cannot ever possibly be reclaimed. What this movement has done is that it has caused a national discourse, an international discourse, regarding the use of language and its importance in any movement that seeks to get people out from under the foot of oppression. When we say a word like slut, what we are doing is we are calling upon people to examine the way that they are speaking, to examine the choices that they are making, and to examine how they might be oppressing others with their speech and their actions. And that is why we're here to march today. Now, obviously, there have been many of examples of this in the recent media. Everyone knows about the one where all of a sudden we learned that we missed that day in sex ed class, where it was talked about that we had some sort of magical, rape discriminatory, shutting that whole thing down uterus. But that is not by far the only instance in which this has happened. Just yesterday an article was posted where a judge in Arizona, a female judge in Arizona, upon trying a case of a woman that brought her perpetrator into court, a police perpetrator, who had come into a bar and groped her genitals without provocation, without consent, this judge, upon throwing out any chance for him to serve any jail time, said to the woman, well, if you wouldn't have been in that bar, this wouldn't have happened to you. Sorry about the fingers. In fact, she said to this woman, my mother taught me that as soon as we start blaming others, we lose the chance to change ourselves. We are here at Slut Walk to say the blame should only and ever be placed on the person responsible for enacting the violations that cause sexual assault, rape, sexual violence, and objectification. <laughs> the blame 
only exists with no one else. Today we have some really amazing speakers here to talk to you about all of the many facets that are involved in this fight, in this fight to end rape culture. And we're very excited about all of them. And the first one is spectacular. To start off today, we have someone that is coming to you from, I would say, a sex-positive lens that can only be called revolutionary. This woman is the director for the culture uh, for the Center for Sex and Culture in San Francisco. <laughs> this woman is a writer of erotica as well as a columnist. She is curator of the Good Vibes uh, Antique Vibrator Museum, which is all kinds of fun. And she has a PhD in sexology, and she is an advocate for any person that seeks to express their sexuality to its full extent of fierceness and spectacularity. Dr. Carol Queen. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for that introduction, and I'm really happy and honored to be here at Slut Rock. <laughs> Second year, this is awesome. Um, I want to tie some of the slut walk movements, um, actions and ideals and sort of its significance together with um, my hometown movement, the sex positive uh, community. And I think I want to start by saying that this is such a, 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 a 21st century uh, heal the binary movement slut walk. It's extremely important to me as a sex positive person for that reason. I came up in feminism of the 70s and 80s when mainstream feminists frequently were not willing to advocate for even their rights, much less the integrity and choice making of problematically sexual male identified women, whatever that meant to whoever was casting the term around. Um, women who were uh, sex workers, women who played SM, women who had lots of partners, or who were sluts. I guess that's kind of what that means. And so as I came up within feminism, I had the distinctly uncomfortable experience of a strong vocal part of feminism, because it was never everyone, of course, who felt this way not wanting to take my sexual issues seriously and not wanting to give me space to explore sexuality the way I wanted to do it. Exploring or experiencing sexuality the way you want to do it, I think, is the heart of us being able to say that we are sexually empowered people or on the path to getting there because this isn't a culture that really, really, really wants everyone, especially women, to be sexually empowered. Our culture love sex to sell things and mostly is pretty paranoid about sex the rest of the time. I was recently part of a wonderful in-process documentary about uh, youth sex education that's kind of unpacking the messages that we uh, got in school, those of us who went to public schools and very few of us went to public schools that talked to us about our rights as people to have sexual pleasure, certainly as women. You can go through uh, an entire high school sex ed course and not know about the clitoris. Uh, you can probably go through some college sex ed courses and not be very sure where that thing is or how to deploy it. <laughs> Hint, it is not a doorbell. <laughs> Except for those percentage of you who actually like that. You know, once you get warmed up not saying there's anything wrong with that. Just suggesting you not start there. <laughs> but you know, to me, it's just as important to be able to say, to have sexual integrity and our own individual sexualities understood by ourselves, conveyed to others, respected by others, to be able to say that we don't want to have sex. There's nothing about asexuality or celibacy or not getting any even if you might want to or anything on the realm of 
not having tons of sex hanging from the ceiling dressed in fancy outfits. That is not sex positive. Being sex positive, yes. <laughs> and your little dog, do. <laughs> I'm hearing the term sex positive being used in a way that I'm not completely comfortable with. And I want to give you just a little bit m more of a fine read on it, because I think doing that will bring it right back around um, and illustrate the way positivity and the anti-violence slut walk movement um, are best friends forever. And what I hear people using sex positive as a, as a sort of metaphor or, or a, uh, just a statement to describe is, sex is awesome! I love it! And you know what? Often sex can be pretty awesome. And if you love it, that's great. That's better than not loving it, probably. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're having it, in the, in the big scheme of things, enjoying yourself, good. I think, I think we can mostly agree that that might be something we could put in our statement of unity. But you can be sex positive if you're not having sex. You can be sex positive if you never want to have sex. You can be sex positive if you've never had sex that was pleasurable or good, even if that sex was traumatic. Because what I think of, and the definition I use for this term is, sex positivity is a way to interrogate the culture to state that in our perfect world, anybody could have positive, pleasurable, healthy, consensual sex of any kind that's also consensual with whoever else or whatever else. I suppose we should include vibrators in that. And that's not the world we live in right now. That doesn't mean we can't be sex positive. It doesn't mean that we don't have a sex positive community here in San Francisco and in many other places around the country, around the continent, around the world. What it means is we have to interrogate what stands in the way of people having that kind of positive experience with sexuality. What are those things? Well, we get super mixed messages about sex. We're supposed to be sexy. How are we going to like attract a partner if we're not sexy? And if we don't have a partner, we'll be lonely. Plus which, other people will go, they don't even have a partner. And we'll be like, single. Fuck. <laughs> well, can't have that. And you might range into the, oh, I don't know, the man heterosexual. Ah! And you might look at it from the perspective of how are we supposed to have really awesome sex, especially right out of the gate, if we just had sex ed that basically just made us scared and freaked out. And that that was the cultural purpose of the education that we had. There are so many strands to this rope that tie us, and I don't mean in a fun way, from the culture that still is not ready to embrace our sexual rights and our sexual diversity. And even within sex positive culture, as it's come to be called, it's too frequent that we hear somebody feeling great about their own sexual profile and kind of being a little snarky about other people's. And you know what I think Slut Walk wants to do, which is really completely consonant with what my idea of sex positivity wants to do, is say, we are all sexual individuals. We want a range of different things. We want to dress and represent ourselves a range of different ways. How we dress, how we identify, whether or not we have sexual stuff written on our t-shirts doesn't necessarily lead other people to be able to assume they know what we want, who we want, how often, how. And it doesn't necessarily give anybody else the chance to even 
get into our sexual space, much yeah. less act as though they have a right so. to come into our sexual space without our consent. Consent is fundamental to sex positivity. Without it, without it, how can we get to a space where we feel comfortable, where the people we're attracted to feel comfortable, where healing can happen, where trust can happen, where even if we're the sluttiest slut on the block and we like to sport fuck, we know we're going to do it safely. And if we don't want, at this time or ever, to move into a sexual space with anybody else, or maybe even with ourselves, because that's a whole separate thing, you can stay home and be sex positive all week long, although you might get fired from your job if you do. And there are therapists going to tell you if that happens to you that you're a sex addict and then they need to see you. So try to work that out amongst yourselves. But most importantly, if consent isn't part of the picture, we don't have a safe world to explore sexuality in, to go off and do whatever it is we're going to do instead of exploring sexuality in to be able to support our friends who are exploring differently than we are. We just don't have it. We don't have a safe community, world, any of it. That doesn't mean many of us aren't going to have great sex. It does mean that almost all of us who get to the point of great sex get there by having to take a path that is sometimes fraught, sometimes hard, sometimes rocky and a pill, or whatever kind of metaphor you want for that sort of thing. And what I wish for us is a sex positive world where everybody could, if conditions were right, and we want to make those conditions happen within our movements, in conjunction with each other, separately, all of us talking to our friends and other people, make a place where anybody can have safe, pleasurable, healthy, happy, positive sexual experiences if they want them and that set of conditions means that someday if we have a slut walk maybe we'll just be us showing off our awesome outfits and enjoying ourselves together on the street with our fishnets and our tight, uh, tight stuff and our flowing stuff and our outfit that falls down off of our shoulders, whatever it is that makes you feel that you've stepped outside your door embodying either happy exhibitionistic sexuality or contested sluttiness. I want the contested part of sluttiness to go the fuck away. And I want sluts to be nice to non-sluts. And I want everybody to be nice to sluts. And I don't want it to matter if we're sluts or not. In a perfect world, that would just be something we use when we're doing dirty talk at home or, you know, in the bar or wherever we do it. It would be something that we could take on as a political identity, as indeed many of us already do. Because you know what? I cannot tell from looking at you people in your clothes and in your few clothes which ones of you are sluts. I can't tell by looking at you. And nobody out there can either. Because if I can't, they haven't studied this shit as long as I have. <laughs> if I can't look at you and know for sure if you're a slut, no one can. So let's just get that clear. And let's also get it clear that nobody knows for sure what your sexuality is like people unless you convey that to them in some way that you want to. I don't know if somebody's gay what kind of sex they have. I don't know if somebody's straight what kind of sex they have. I don't know if they have any. I don't know any of that. And the culture doesn't actually know it either. We are all the subjects of projection yeah. on such a large level. I think even within our own community sometimes. So I want each one of us to have a sexuality that feels right to us. There are 7 billion plus people in this world. There are 7 billion plus sexual orientations. 
Smollett is only one of them, and it matches up nicely with most of the others, if you want it to. And the fact is that we, especially these women and gender, queer and, and trans and queer people, all run the risk of being labeled as slut from the outside because we're not heteronormative. And heteronormative, way too sexy for their shoes, gals, run that risk too. And you know, it's all also about the assumptions of orientation, the assumptions of gender and sexual socialization, the assumptions that we carry around. I want to ask the Slut Walker movement to work with the sex positive movement to say we can't assume. We want to convey our limits. We want everyone to understand consent. We want to protect participate in teaching because we know that part of the underlying problem here is that everybody got such bad sex education except like the Unitarians, bless your hearts, and the occasional private school student. Privilege, enough said. I want everybody to have access to these ideas, to talk them out, to be able to live their lives accordingly, to have the sexually enjoyable world and the sexually safe world that everybody deserves. That is sex positive. It's the heart of the slut walk philosophy as I understand it. I know we're going to hear a lot more nuance it with the other speakers and that's, that's all to the good. But I just want you all to walk away asking yourself how you can further all of these ideas in your lives. Maybe it's by deciding that now it's time to learn how to have an orgasm. Maybe it's by talking to other people about sexuality. Maybe it's by telling other people that your sexuality is your business. Whatever it is, it's a step toward a world where we don't have to have the discussion that sexuality, too much sexuality, the wrong kind of sexuality, sexuality that somebody else doesn't understand makes us unsafe. That's unacceptable. Please join together. Let's change this shit. Dr. Carol Queen. Dr. Queen Queen. Badass extraordinaire. No doubt. So now I'm going to introduce you to uh, a woman that is instrumental in everything having to do with the reason why we're here today. Evelyn Ramirez is the woman that actually founded Slut Walk SF Bay. When she founded Slut Walk SF Bay, she founded it upon the fact that she felt familiarity in what this movement stands for. And she feels familiarity with all of you, just not that kind of familiarity yet, perhaps. Ready? All right. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I was a really flaky person up until last year, so I'm really proud of myself for having committed to something as wonderful as Slut Walk. Um, I wanted to thank the organizers for being so hardworking. This is an entirely volunteer position. Uh, there is no pay and sometimes it's really hard to balance that out with school and work and family and what other other things that occupy our lives. So uh, thank you for doing that. Mira, she always does this for free and um, it helps us make our movement more accessible. Uh, thank you to the speakers for being here. I'm here to introduce the second speaker who um, actually was the inspiration for this march. I study anthropology at San Francisco State and he came to speak to our class. Um, it was a sex and gender across cultures. Um, and he came to speak to our class about the Gay Liberation Front and his involvement with gay rights and activism in general. Uh, before doing this, I was really apathetic and I was really angry because as a rape survivor, I felt like I never really got any closure or um, understanding of what had happened to me when I was a child. All I know is that it, I was told it was my fault and I sort of processed that over a period of like 25 years. I'm, tw I'm 30 now, but I was raped when I was five. So when I heard this next speaker in my class talk about how easy it was to start a movement and just to start act being active and to engage other people